So it's the uh, third week of this, this whole pandemic crisis. You know, we do uh, meetings here three, four times a week. I'm thinking about right now how empty our office is right now. I mean, nobody's here right now. Boardroom, completely empty. That's where all the magic happens. This is how you build a virtual business, which is now becoming a completely virtual type of world. I mean, the way we go to school now will be forever changed. They can't come here right now. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God for online webinar. I'll tell you that the best money move is for us to teach, coach, and mentor other people, to teach them how to become an entrepreneur. Because what, 3.3 million people last week filed for unemployment? All right, so it's the uh, third week, going on the third week of this self-quarantine and uh, this whole pandemic crisis. I mean, you've heard the term homesick, right? But how many of you are actually feeling office sick or work sick, job sick? You know, uh, when I'm thinking about the former careers I've had, you know, coming out the Marine Corps, you know, I was, I was a, a lifeguard uh, from five to eight o'clock in the morning. And then I was a Jiffy Lube hood tech. I picked up my son, dropped him off at school, went as a single dad and boom, I was a Jiffy Lube hood technician. If I wasn't working as a Jiffy Lube hood technician, I was working as an uh, Olive Garden server. A couple weeks ago, I did a Facebook Live right in front of the former Olive Garden that I used to work at because I was just thinking about what I was going through at that state of mind, panicking, struggling, just got out the military, paying the bills, you know, putting a roof over kids' heads, food at a table, all those, all those different responsibilities I had. And I'm just thinking about those that just can't do that right now. I'm thinking about those that can't be a server, that can't be a bartender, those that can't live off tips right now because they're not serving. And to see the whole entertainment, dining, restaurant, hospitality, travel, industries completely shut down and industries compressing, contracting, people being laid off. You know, I did a Facebook, I'm sorry, an, an Instagram Live the other day. And I said, right now, who is laid off for now? W I'm just curious who was following me on Instagram. They got laid off and boom, 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 people starting requests. Have me, have me, have me. And I put them on, guy from Atlanta, laid off from Double Tree Hotel, another person, Indian guy, who's actually worked in the Philippines for a minute. He actually knew Tagalog. He was speaking to me in my native tongue. And uh, he's a bartender at a restaurant called The Palms and they laid him off in New York. I think it was at JFK. And he's wondering what to do. Thinking about all this uncertainty, I'm just thinking how faithful and grateful and how my mind is saying, thank God I was in a situation where I was forced to improve. Thank God I was in a situation where I was forced to, to learn a new craft. Thank God I was in a situation where a crisis brought the best out of me that my breakdown was actually my breakthrough moment to see, you know, you better learn some skills or else this is gonna get even worse. And I think that's where we're at right now as a country. That's where we are right now as a company is how we've had to pivot and adapt. And I'm thinking about my office right now. I'm thinking about office sick. We do meetings here three, four times a week. We help people make phone calls here on Monday nights. I'm thinking about right now how empty our office is right now. I mean, I got one office here, my business partner here, Maurice Hansberry, uh, working with his team right now. But the rest of the office is shut down. Uh, this place here, normally on Tuesdays, is just jumping. We're doing pregame, we're getting fired up, we're getting, you know, listen, when we create a company, so we want to take the best of our faith, best of sports, best of our family, create a company out of it. And that's what we have right here. And, and normally this is where everybody's just jumping around, getting crazy getting their energy because we believe that money is energy. Nobody's here right now. Boardroom, completely empty. That's where all the magic happens. Another boardroom, training happens, orientation happens, empty. I'm thinking about all the guys that we had the fortunate opportunity to mentor and say, you know what? I could put somebody here in a situation where they can depend on them. Because people are wondering right now, what's the best investment? What, where, where should I put my money? What's the best money moves? I'm gonna tell you this right quick. I'll tell you that the best money move, the best insurance I have, I'll get to in a second, is for us to teach, coach, and mentor other people. Look, I mean, look, I'm looking at this group of diverse individuals in a multicultural mil uh, middle class that we have the honor and pleasure of coaching and mentoring, to teach them how to become an entrepreneur. Because what, 3.3 million people last week filed for unemployment? I had a conference call with these guys last week. I said, how many guys filed for unemployment? Not one hand went up. I said, how many, how many guys did not file unemployment? All the hands went up. And I'm thinking that they're not a burden on society. Why? Because they learned to be self-sustaining, self-inspired, self-motivated, self-starting entrepreneurs. I'm thinking about all the different folks here that represents a family, that represents their neighborhood, that represents their high school, their college, their branch of service. Very few of them, if any, are panicked right now. Why? Because they learn control their money with their own hands. They're not depending on a stimulus check. They're not depending on Uncle Sam. They're not depending on the job. You know, we have a saying that he or she that controls your income controls you. And I'm thinking about our office right now. I'm thinking about all the folks here that are put in a position of saying, you know what? This is where they're getting trained. They can't come here right now. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God for online webinar. <laughs> Matter of fact, if there's a stock to buy, long time ago, I should have bought more Zoom stock. I should have bought more go-to-meeting stock. 
any online web conference, WebEx, I should have bought that stock, but I didn't. It's okay, I've got other investments. But I'm thinking about all these chairs that represents a family. I'm thinking about all these different chairs that represents an individual. But all about these chairs that represents a job that somebody was dependent on, but not in these chairs. They're saying, you know what, how can I make sure I have control? Because he or she that controls your income, controls you. And so when I'm, when I'm thinking about this message that my CEO, my mentor, Patrick Ben David put out there, and the best type of insurance to buy in a moment of crisis, if we want to improve, we got really two choices. Number one, like I learned early on, is learning by force. There's nobody made me aware. I didn't make myself aware, nor did I put myself in a position to say, you know what, how do I be in the best position for success? I was just worried about a paycheck every first and 15th of the month coming out of the military. I was just going, worried about going to job and collect tips, punch in, punch out, clock. Nobody made me aware of a better life at that point because I was forced to improve. And then I started to learn, I started to grow, and I said, whoa, there's a whole nother world out there that I never knew existed because of crisis. And so the second thing that I learned how to improve is learn by choice. Because instead of getting my ass handed to me because of a crisis, I learned how to be proactive about it and take advantage advantage of the opportunities that's even inside a crisis. Some of you guys may not be thinking, there is an opportunity inside crisis, there is. You may not like the crisis where it's at right now, but it's not what happens to you, it's the things that happen for you. And I'm thinking about the types of people right now, as Patrick McDavid is alluding in this post. He says, first type of people are happening right now, because there's three types of people that's experiencing this right now, is the first type is the people that's getting lazy, they're developing bad habits, they're waking up late, they're, they lost their gym shape, they lost their diet, right? Remember, we talked about homesick and office sick, well, this is what happens if you have too much home, because they don't have an environment that's structured to guide them and coach them and teach them. So now they're office sick. Now they're building bad habits. And then the second type of person is saying, you know, thank God for President Trump. Thank God for the government. Thank God for the government because, you know, I was depending on my tax refund check. Now I got a federal stimulus check to financially get me ahead. So in other words, your dependency on somebody else, the government, church, charity, somebody's goodwill starts to increase during these times. And instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to increase myself, you just depend on other people to give you that increase or to help you maintain, which comes to the third type of person going through this crisis. If somebody that's willing to say, you know what, let me improve Improvise, let me adapt and let me overcome. And a whole nother version of you appears and say, oh, you need to learn this skill. You need to learn this skill. You need to build these type of relationships. You need to adapt, you need to improve. This is how you use social media. This is what you need for IT. This is what you need for online marketing. This is what you need for online sales. This is how you build a virtual business, which is now becoming a completely virtual type of world. I mean, the way we go to school now will be forever changed. My kids right now, have been at home from school. They're not going to college right now. They're first year in college, they're at home, learning online. And my daughter said, Poppy, it's so hard to learn from school because you don't have the structure and the discipline of going to a campus to learn. We gotta do this stuff online. Nobody's watching us. And then the people that say, you know what? I don't have a boss looking over my shoulder telling me to do something. It's hard for me to work at home because I'm used to somebody telling me to do something. But now this is exposed. This is, this is showing you that you need to improve this area Otherwise, you're gonna get buried because for most part, even if they do give you a temporary delay in paying your rent or your mortgage, okay, but that goes back to number two. You're dependent on Uncle Sam, you're dependent on some politician to give you a pass. And so I like number three the most because it gives the most amount of control. It gives me the most amount of capacity and ability. And if you're sitting there or you're watching this right now, say, so you know what, how do I get through this crisis? Listen, I don't know all the answers, but I know this is this. Find something that you can sell online. Find something that you can sell virtually. Find something that you can bring income in without having to physically be at somebody's house or place of business that you can still bring in revenue online. And the folks in the businesses that have been doing this for years, they're so much further ahead than that right now. I'm so thankful and grateful that technology has been part of our fabric of how we do business for, for many, many years right now. And guess what? The insurance companies are telling us, how are you guys not slowing down? It's like this pandemic is affecting everybody else, but it's not affecting you. You know why? Because our insurance firm of multicultural middle class between the, the demographics of 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50, early 50s, we've been online forever. We've been online since we started. We've been on social media since we started. And now it's just another form of doing business. And our competitors are flying around for trying to figure out how to do this stuff. Because we anticipated and started using this long before we needed it, guess what happened? Now we're in a different position of control. And I'm thinking about, as I wrap up this video, I'm thinking about how I started in business. I started in, in 1999, 2000. I've been taking notes of how to improve my life, at least financially, since 1999, 2000. I got my old notebook and my first set of business cards and my first notes I've ever taken as a budding, aspiring entrepreneur. I didn't even know how to spell the word entrepreneur. But I remember in 01, because I'm just trying to figure things out. I didn't, I didn't have a mentor, didn't have anybody helping me, didn't, wasn't smart to plug into a system. I missed out on all the opportunities in 01. And I was reactive to this dot-com bubble Everybody's losing money, everybody's losing money, but here's, here's what happens when people are losing money. It's not like money's evaporating. The money's going from one hand to another, right? When a man with money meets a man with experience, the man experience leaves with money. I was under experience because I was in smart enough to have experience enough to surround myself in a platform or a mentor in my corner 
to help me monetize and capture the opportunities in the middle of a crisis. And then I got smart. And then the next, the next two, three, four years, I started surrounding myself with people. I said, I'm not going to miss the next opportunity. By the way, everybody around me was making money in other things, real estate, mortgage, blah, blah, blah. There everybody's right. I just stick, I just fo stay focused on my thing. I was thinking, how do I innovate insurance? How do I disrupt insurance? Nobody's paying attention to insurance. I like this, I like this field. Boom, 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 next thing you know, 08, 09 hit. And I was prepared this time around. I took advantage of opportunities. I had money. I invested in somebody's car. They were a real estate guy was sadly was going through a divorce. He sold me his Bentley. I picked it up for 40, 40, 50 cents on a dollar, flipped that in two weeks and bought some real estate, flipped that in, thir uh, in 30, 60 days, improved the bathrooms, improved the, the kitchens. And that became my seed capital to running my own business in the insurance industry. So all these different things I learned and I got ready for that crisis in 08 and I became prepared. Now, 2020, not instead of just pre being prepared, now we're leading and disrupting. All our competitors are reacting, we're leading. And so you got to figure out what best insurance shall I buy? Should I buy before a crisis, in a crisis, and even after a crisis, it's this one form of insurance. It's not life insurance, it's not health insurance, it's not disability, it's not long-term care insurance, it's not credit insurance, it's income insurance. And you don't buy that through an insurance company. You buy that through your ability and capacity to learn, to develop new skills, to surround yourself with a different group of people, to be exposed and to have the right people in your corner. And uh, the last couple Sundays now, we ran webinars all across the country on a national level to such the point that these webinars were just choked up. I mean, we had choppy sound and everything. Every, everybody in the mom was on, on our webinars. But here, here's what we really like about our webinars. We're getting the right people in our corner and, and so many people that are saying, thank God you're in our corner. Forget about Capital One, what's in your wallet. Think about entrepreneurship and income insurance who's in your corner and I encourage you through, through this crisis that you're listening because fear does sharpen listening but at the same time too pain demands attention I hope you pay attention to the opportunities that are before you right now I hope that you say you know what maybe if I took my time and attention this one skill set two skill set three skill set it wasn't gonna get me to where I want to go because here's here's what's gonna happen here's gonna here's gonna happen another another five ten years from now you don't know the crisis is about to happen I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years now I've seen four or five major crises happen crises will always happen the only thing constant is change and because change is always constant guess what happens in of change crisis and this time you can prepare for some of you seen this for the very time experience for the first time maybe you like where, where i was in 01 just didn't know what was going on reactive but hopefully here going forward if you purchase some income insurance to always constantly make money whether good, good times or bad times and here's what we found out in the insurance industry we are a essential business that's why i'm here at the office that's why some of my colleagues are here at the office. my business partner here at the office because we are an essential business the people, sadly, that we're not coaching and training that don't have a rental space here, they can't come. We're limiting the amount of people that come into the office. Now we're doing it virtually. Everybody say, you know, thank God we had that experience before because now we so appreciate the office, the culture, the synergy, the handshakes, their office sick. And so that being said, I hope that you use this time to build new skills that allow you that income insurance because when you have income insurance, guess what you have? You got financial confidence. My wife's parents, we retired parents a long time ago. They're still retired. We're not laying anybody off here at the office. Matter of fact, we're looking to grow and expand. My parents, right? They're, they're retired. We told them to stay Home. But both sides of our family, my parents and my, my in-laws, both retired because of entrepreneurship. Not only did we create financial security and safety and peace of mind for ourselves, but able to create that for the people around us. And people wondered, why were you working so hard to begin with? Why were we working so hard when things were going right? You know why we realized? Because you don't build a roof when it's raining. You don't build a roof when it's raining. There's a proverb out there, I reminded that by wisdom, a house is built. I hope that you take this time as wisdom. And what's wisdom? It's knowledge times experience. That's wisdom. And I hope you use this wisdom to build your financial house. Therefore, when the big bad financial wolves come, come shouting and crawling around in crisis and all these things are happening, you're going through it, close the door, you're safe, secure, confident, waiting for them to pass because they'll pass. This time shall pass. But you go back out there and you start leading, disrupting, and you discover that version of you that you know is always there, but you never expressed it, never met them. Go meet that person. Buy the right form of insurance, especially before, during, and after a crisis, which is income insurance. That being said, I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you're thinking about. I want to know what you're experiencing in your neck of the woods. Drop it in the comments section below. I'm excited that many of you are starting to engage with us because there's nothing else better to do than to study online, to learn, and do the right things. I hope you're not Netflixing and chilling. I hope that you're webinaring and growing. I got that from John Lee. He's on my uh, Facebook live stream. So that's not original for me. It's from guy John Lee that to what we happen to be mentoring through uh, Damian Mackey in our Hayward, California office. So don't Netflix and chill, webinar and grow. Learn online and grow. Be different. That being said, I'm a smart guy here from the empty offices of the My Smart Moon Team headquarters, home of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Till we meet again. Continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. Be money smart today.